Let's pray. God, help us today to see your face. God, help us to see the relationship that you call us to be in. Lord, that redemptive relationship, that how you've sealed the sons and daughters of God with the promised Holy Spirit. We are yours. We are notably marked as yours, and the world can see it, Lord. And we wear that mark honorably, God, because it, it, it's, it gives us divine worth, the worth that Jesus Christ poured into our hearts. Lord, bless us today with your word. Give us manna from heaven. <clears throat> Lord, we pray for everyone that's on Zoom. We pray for everyone who's gathered. Lord, we strain our ear today to heaven to hear your voice, not the voice of men. In Jesus' name. Really wanted to preach about tyrants, but I'm, God didn't let me do it. So we're going to, this is something I've been wrestling with all week, wrestling. Um, so I just like to share messages that mean a lot to me and help me in my Christian walk. Because that's what it's all about for me. It's like, how does this work? How does that doctor work? How does this verse work? What does this mean? Because it's inroads and it shows you how you can walk as a Christian. So I'm going to start in Ephesians 4. And today we're going to talk about the seal of God or the stamp of God upon his people, upon his people. God's stamp that marks, these are mine. These are mine. He gives you a badge. He gives you a stamp. And we ought to wear that with 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 uh with value and integrity and and hope and joy and we're we're marked by God as his own. We didn't do that. He did it and he marked us as his. Why should I live a why should I fight sin every day? Why should I continue this struggle? Why should we come out to the park in the midst of a pandemic when others are sick? Why shouldn't we just stay home and 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 and, and stay in the flesh and stay in 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 our houses? Because because we we are marked by, by the seal and stamp of God. We're different. And, and, and God has a plan and a will for us. And here we are singing in the park, showing the world there is a way. There's a way to get back to God. There's a way to fix what's going on right now. And it's turn back to God. And when we pray here with joy and people walk by, that's the message. Look at these folks. They found another way. I don't, you know, they're, they're turning back to God. And that is the message that would save the whole nation and the, and the whole, uh, the, 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 the whole world to do this in spite of the struggles. We know the struggles are real and we're not going to deny them today, but we're going to press through the struggles just like we're doing in Africa. Just press through them. Oh, thank you. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> not to do that. Thank you so much. Uh oh, <laughs> I'm going to text them right now, you guys. Getting close, right? Mm -hmm. Looks like it. Is, is your camera need to be on? Yeah. There you go. Awesome. Oh, it's we on us. We have down. to turn it around. <laughs> okay. There you go. Hey guys. Oh, one more. Can you guys hear on twist. Zoom? One more Can twist. You hear? One more twist. <laughs> yeah. You're the video. <laughs> oh, you can't. You can't see it. Okay. Well, it's like. Vertical, it should be. There oh, we go. See. Oh, no. <laughs> so, how does it? Okay, no. right. Because all just... it's split. 
you need the camera would have to be upright i think uh, because see, with the way I'm looking at it, he's uh, he's in the correct location. If we hit that, that's just going to oh. be yeah, yeah, the way we're looking at it, it is good. It's like 90, 90 degrees. Um, yeah, there, there, maybe. Yeah, there we go. I don't know what I did, but that's <laughs> how I fixed my... You good? Yeah. Oh, yay. Hello again. That's how I fix my toaster. I just shake it. And it's amazing what how, how many things you can fix by shaking them or banging them. Sometimes you got it doesn't work. So don't quote me on that, but I just shook it and it worked. So we're in Ephesians chapter four. And today we're going to be talking about the seal, the seal that God put on you as a believer. As a believer, there's a seal on you. And that's why we should fight sin. I wish I had a wedding ring, but I don't. I might borrow yours before the sermon's over. But God gives us a ring, and it's a sign. It's a covenant. Like, no, I'm, I'm in a relationship. And the reason people don't struggle against sin is maybe they don't see that part of Christianity. They don't have the fullness, the wholeness. I'm in a covenant. I'm covered. I'm free. I'm in love. I'm, I see this ring? I'm not going to cheat on Jesus. I mean, you know, on a daily basis, something's got to keep you in, keep you in the game. On a daily basis, when you fall, something's got to put you back on the horse. Because in the end of the day, that's all we have is the cross that calls us back. Not our worth, not our works, not what we did. Did you have a good week? Did you have a bad week? It's not the wins and losses. It's the cross it can, that, that allows us to come back to God. And every time you do that, you, you, you're recognizing the seal of God on your life. You're acknowledging that imagio deo. You're saying, I see it. I've been stamped from the garden. The devil has tried to erase the image of God on men. But in, in Christ now to us as believers, God has first washed us and he raced the world, just like that silly putty analogy. And he is, he has stamped his image on us. We talked to the uh, girls at the COC and we were using the analogy of silly putty. Remember that silly putty. And you could take it and you could put it on a comic book and you could peel it up and like, wow, look, Archie and Jughead is on, you know, <laughs> I, I, I got a perfect, I got a perfect image. I got a perfect stamp and it was exciting, right? But then you could take that putty and you could ball it up and you could start over. And that's what God wants to do to us because as we were intended to bear the image of God, somehow along the way, we've borne the image of the wicked one. Uh, uh, because of the world, because of sin, uh, 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 wickedness got stamped on our DNA. So God, in, in salvation, when you become a believer, when you surrender to Christ, when he has his way, he gives you a new heart. He actually takes your old life like silly putty and he, and he starts it all, all over again, brand new. And then he takes it and stamps it upon Christ. And then when you pull it off, you look like Christ. You are bearing the image of Christ as believers. So in the end of it all, which we haven't started yet, that's why I got to fight sin, John. That's why I wake up and go, I got to go back to the cross. I got to go back to the well, because now I'm an image bearer of God. And I have that stamp. Talk about value and worth on a worthless life, a life that was done and, and stamped. And, and the devil thought he won and had his image ground into me. And then God says, come on, I'll wash you, I'll make you clean. Your soft putty, your new clay. Now I want to stamp the image of Christ on you. I didn't know who I was, thought I wanted to be like other people. I took that silly putty and stamped it on my brother, stamped it on criminals. You know, I want to be this, I want to be that. And look at, look at, look at, I got. And Christ said, no, the plan I have for you from the foundation of the world, not that you did it, but this was my will for your life that I want to, 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 I want to take the stain of sin off of your life, the stamp of wickedness, the stamp of hell, the stamp of, of, of destruction. And I want to put my stamp on you, my ring. You belong to me. We're in, you're in covenant with the, with the, with the mem three members of the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. They're in 
covenant to, to, to save you. And the first thing they do was to wash you, to erase the stamp of sin on your life. And as you are a believer, you have a new heart and a new stamp and a new soul. And every time you go to the cross, God stamps afresh the image of his own son on your life. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who we are. And that's our motivation to fight sin. <clears throat> Get that. Oh, I'm, I'm the son of a king. I'm the, I have the stamp of a holy God on me. That is my motivation. And to get up and to go to the cross, God is not keeping score of your life. Sanctification is not the redemption of our flesh. It's the perfection of our will. Of our will. It's not a behavior situation. It's not a behavior modification. It's a stamp, an embossment deep into your DNA. This is who you are. You'll try to get away from it. You'll try to run from it. You'll find other things that will satisfy you, won't satisfy you, but you'll try. But you will never erase that stamp of God on your heart, nor can the enemy erase it off of you. It is in you. I want, I want us to receive that today because that's what God showed me today, this week, as I, you know, I struggle. And you're like, well, why should I get up again? Why should I struggle again? Because you are, you're a good China. You're the, you're the Lennox China. You know, clean that French fries off of that. Yeah, let's get some filet on here. You know, what are you doing? We, we, we value ourselves so little, right? We, we do things. We, we say things. We represent ourselves uh, with such little value. But if we knew who we were in Christ, the stamp upon us, it would motivate us just like it does in any relationship. I have a ring. I'm staying faithful. This is my covenant. I'm in this. And that's that's the that's the blessing of God. Listen, it's Ephesians 4. But it's called put on the new man. But ask yourself, whose image am I bearing? You know, we ought to bear the image of Christ. This I say, Ephesians 4, we'll start with 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. I love this so slow. Take it so slow. Like everything matters. Like don't walk like the Gentiles. Don't be like this world. In the vanity, it's all vanity. It doesn't lead anywhere in the vanity of their minds. Listen to this. Having the understanding, having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. By the ignorance that is in them, because they don't know God, they remain alienated. And to be alienated and separated from God is a horrible thing. It leaves you in a horrible and dark place. And that's not what we want. And even if you go there, Come back to God. Come back to the image of God. Let it always call you. When you look at that ring on your finger, say, I'm going back. Lord, I'm coming. I'm coming to get a fresh stamp from Christ. I want to represent Christ. There was a time that I didn't look like Christ. I didn't smell like Christ. I look like the world. People see you and what do they see? Do you smell like the world? Do you look like the world? I even, this is getting a little personal. I should stop. <laughs> I even stopped wearing cologne, but I like good cologne from like Macy's, you know, the good stuff. And I'm not preaching against cologne. But when I was praying, I'm like, I don't think God wants to smell Dolce and Cabana. I'm just being honest about it. So you know what I did? I gave that to Omar. <laughs> Let him work it out. I'm done. I, now I wear anointing oil. <laughs> it's a true story. But the, but the aroma, you know, with the stamp of God, there's there's a, there's an aroma of Christ. There's there, there's there, there's the blessings, and people recognize it. Said of the disciples, they saw that they had been with Christ. These people look like Christ, and even Peter, in that moment when he didn't want to look like Christ, I'm not with him. I told you, yes, you were. I see that stamp on you. You can't deny it, Peter. You're with him. He stamped you. You can't deny that. 
It was there. Having the understanding darkened, the world, what a, what a, what a place to, to, to get away from. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Verse 19, who being past feelings have given themselves over to lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. There's people in my work now. We're working with a company, you know, but people in that company that that are being not not honest with us. We have daily meetings, and and one side actually tells us lies and tries to hide the truth, and we find out, right? And it's like, who are we in business with right now? What's going on? You can't lie in business. You can't tell somebody something. So. That's the stamp of the world on those people. It's just coming through. How could they be honest? How could they have integrity when they don't have Christ stamped on their heart? But we do expect a level of honesty. And when I, when I saw that the other day, I thought, man, I would love to tell this guy, you, you're wearing the wrong stamp on you. I can smell it. I can see it. You know, we can tell what you're doing. It's so obvious. It's, 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 it's not lovely. Christ is lovely. The things he'll stamp on us are, are lovely. People will say, no, that's kind. You know, that's kind of you. That's, that's gentle. That's, that's forbearing, you know. People notice Christ. We might not see it, but people will notice Christ on your life. They'll notice it. They'll notice it. When I was a young Christian sold out for God, I had the worst cars ever. But I had an 82 Dodge Colt that kept breaking down. And one time I took it to the mechanic shop and I was sitting in that. I just sat in my car, and read my Bible. I don't know if it was three hours or four hours or five hours. Finally, the guy came out and said, what are you, how can, what are you doing here? What do you, how can you not be screaming and going crazy? And like, I was just like, I'm at peace right now. I'm fine. Like, I don't, I don't need anything. I'm not trying to get out of here. Like, I just want my car fixed. I trust God, you know, it's uh, the, 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 the imprint that Christ will manifest through you is 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 different than than how the world's operating and and men will know that you've been with jesus for you have not so learned christ paul said verse 20 and if so you be that you heard him and have been taught by him as the trust is in jesus that you put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to deceitful lust. Put it off, Paul says. He's talking to the believers. Don't act like the world anymore. You have the stamp of God on you. It's happened. Remember it's happened. Value it. Fight for it. Let it be your motivation. Verse 24, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, put away lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. Be angry, but sin not. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. Give no place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the things which are good, that he may have to give to him that needs. That's a, a beautiful verse. Side note, he's talking about people that used to steal. Now they're in Christ. Now they have the stamp of God. Paul's telling them, here's what you should look like. Don't steal anymore, right? That's a given. But now get a job. And not just get a job, but have some money to give to the people in need. Complete 180 on that person's life. They're stealing, and now they're giving to the widows and orphans. That's the stamp of God. But Paul's reinforcing what it looks like. So you got to reinforce what it looks like. Here's what it looks like, because we can all get caught up in behavior, you know. But steal no more. Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying. Well, there's a hard one. Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Only what can edify somebody, you know. That it may minister grace to the hearer. Really important stuff because we can say things, you know, I say things because I want to be funny, 
but that's not really coming always from a heart that's like, what's the best thing to say to this person, you know? And so, and this one, verse 30, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. So there it is. Grieve not the Holy Spirit. When we do these things, when we act like the world, when we don't recognize the seal of Christ on us, when we walk in another way, it, it, the Holy Spirit, it grieves the Holy Spirit. It grieves that holy dove of God to live with the believer with a stamp on him, you know, with foul things going through our mind and our heart. It grieves and it doesn't line up with, with the election. You've been called to be a son and a daughter of God, uh, to sit at his table, to wear his robe, high and holy calling. That should encourage us to fight. Of course, you're going to fight. Of course, it's going to be hard. But if you have a motivation, then you, right? I mean, we know why. We want to stay clean. God has given us a treasure. Now we have to protect it. We have to protect it. And we protect it by wrestling against sin and knowing what to do when you sin, knowing where to go and knowing why. Oh, it's too many times. I can't go back to the cross again. Yes, you can. Because this isn't about behavior. This is about your will being perfected. It's about you learning lessons. It's about you saying, I hate sin. I hate sin. That which I, I want to do, I can't do. I hate this sin. But my will, where's our will? The problem is not with behavior. The church is, is, is dealing with behavior. But the problem is with the will. You can perfect your behavior and your will is still not right. You're not in the game. You're not married. Yeah, I'll be good. I'll be good. I won't cheat, but I'm not, I'm not in love. You know, I mean, right. I mean, there's people now that are in covenant relationships that are, their heart's not in it. So if your heart's not in it, your will's not in it and your behavior will catch up with your will. That's why you fix the will first. That's why Jesus is fixing our will first. So he can fix our behaviors secondary. The will is the root. The will is the root. The behavior is just the fruit. The behaviors will come and go. It, it, but, 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 but the root is what God's after. And, and, and the root is your heart. And it's your relationship. And it's your willingness to come to Christ. It's your willingness not to want to grieve the Holy Spirit because you are sealed. But believers need to know that. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Ephesians chapter 4. We'll go right across the street to Ephesians chapter 5 and just read one little verse. And it's this. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Ephesians 6, 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And so some have shortened this verse up to we wrestle not. We wrestle not. Many people don't wrestle against sin. Many people change their doctrine. So that they don't have to wrestle against sin. Many people change their doctrine so they don't have to wrestle against sin. That's not really going to fix the problem. So we can't be those who say we wrestle not. We just change our doctrine. We lowered the standard. We brought Christ down to where we are. We're happy with him here. We're happy with this God spell Jesus. That's you know not not you know doesn't call us up to a high standard but the reason we do wrestle is because god has called us to the highest standard to bear the image of christ what a responsibility and a privilege so we must wrestle we must wrestle we must wrestle jesus already saved us we're not under the dominion of sin but we're not sanctified yet we just have a legal status in christ of being forgiven being justified by his blood being brought into the body having your slate wiped clean so there's nothing on it but now you have to do the work and and you don't do the work of sanctification that's the holy spirit but you have to bear your, your, you have to bear your, your, your raw clay, your slate to God and say, 
you know, examine yourself. See if you're in the faith. Uh, look what Paul said to the believers. Do Walk like this. It should look like that. So it's not just conformity. When we find that we're out of conformity, we take our heart to God and we take our will to God and we scratch our head and we say, how come God? How come my will is still half and half? Mensa, mensa, the Italians say. I'm still, how come? I, I feel like I'm, did I say it wrong? Mezza, mezza. Can't even get that right. <laughs> I said it fast. You know, I just, I just went for it. But um, I love to deal with the will because if you deal with the will, if you deal with your will with God, then it's like, it's the big picture. It's not dealing with little things. Oh, you know, I mean, nothing's little in God's economy. It all matters. But deal with the big things. And, and when you fall, as you will, just get up and go back to the cross. Ask him to cleanse you and to stamp his image again on you. But you'll be different this time. You'll be, you'll, each time we do that, it strips your pride. It strips your self-righteousness. God will let you fall because none of that stuff would help you anyway. If, if God were to let us walk and look religious and never fall in our own strength, you would be tricked in thinking oh, that your righteousness was somehow good. So sometimes falling is the best thing. It's like when we're kids, you do this, you fall off a bike. Oh, I better try it this way. You know, and then you say, oh, I understand why I'm standing in Christ. I'm standing in Christ because of him, because he chose me from the foundation of the world and said, you're mine. You, you belong to me. You are no longer belong to yourself. You've been bought with the precious blood of Christ. It takes the responsibility, some of it off of yourself, but there is a great responsibility to being a believer, but you're not, you don't have to do it alone. God has got you. God has got you. Now we'll go over to Romans. Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter eight. It's such a good chapter. I'd like to read the whole chapter, but I won't. I'll go to verse 28. But this chapter is about life in the spirit, no condemnation. The law of the spirit has made you free. There's so many great things here uh, talking about how not to, not to be carnal, not to be uh, in the flesh. You know, the, the flesh has no future. You know, it, 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 it's the spirit in you. It's the stamp of God that's going to go to heaven. That's your future. The spirit is leading you into your future. The flesh is, is the past. Paul's talking to believers that are going through a lot of trials, and he's trying to strengthen them here. So in verse 18, he's saying that the, the sufferings of this life are not worthy to be compared to the, to the joy that, that will be revealed, that the entire creation... Is, is crying out, uh, the, even the trees and the grass and the birds, they're all crying out, deliver us, deliver us, deliver us. We know this isn't right. This isn't God's stamp. God stamped the world and the enemy came in and tried to erase that stamp. God made wonderful rivers that you could drink of and men threw tires in them, right? So you go to New Jersey and there's, that's, it, there's still the stamp of God. You can still see beauty, but you're going to see tires. And you can't drink out of those lakes anymore. I've been to places that are still clean. But look how man just tries to erase the stamp of God, even on creation. So creation is like, get these tires off of me. You know, th th even the creation is the trembling, like for, for, for liberty. They, they, it knows God's going to deliver them. And we should know God's going to deliver us from this bondage. And we should never accept this as, as, as our condition. This is not where we're going to stay. Where you are at now, God, does, God wants to keep perfecting your will so that in the end of your life, you will hate sin. You will not depend much on yourself. And you'll want to get out of here. You'll want to get this bag of flesh off you. Whereas when you're 20, you love this bag of flesh, right? You're like, oh, look how, you know, selfies, you know, it's great. But, but, but when you're older and when you walk in Christ, you will know. 
that this body has not been your friend over the years, has not been your ally. Paul's talking about the great glory that's coming. So he's trying to encourage them. You've been adopted. You're the first fruits. You're saved. Hope in it. Hope in what God's going to do. I love how Paul's encouraging them. And then he gets over here to verse 28. Uh, and he says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. In other words, you're going through this for a reason. Uh, first, first century saints, Nero, they're, they're being persecuted. Paul's encouraging them, trying to prop up the early church. You're going through this for a reason. Keep trusting God. Govern sovereign, no matter how hard it gets. Just keep doing what you're doing now. Keep coming to church. Keep planting seeds. Keep digging wells. Keep showing up for music ministry. Keep going to Planned Parenthood. Keep, keep, keep going. Just keep going in faith because that's who we are. And you are on the winning side. And that's what God wants us to be doing. So we bear his image. We, we bear his actions. We look like him and we take his cause up. Verse 29, for whom he did foreknow. Paul goes deep here for whom he did foreknow he did also predestine to become conformed into the image of his son this is what god's doing with us it was predestined that you and i would be conformed into the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren moreover he did predestinate them he called them whom he called he also justified and whom he justified he will bring to glory. What shall we say then? If God is for us, who can be against us? There it is. Paul's saying, God's got you. Paul's saying, yeah, you're free in Christ in the beginning. You're now adopted. You're going to go through trials, but every the whole world is in this thing with you. We all want to be delivered. You're more than conquerors because you've been called since the foundation of the earth and God's stamping you into the image of his son and he's redeeming you and that's his will for for us hey everybody always struggles with who am i right that's the old question of the 60s but in christ we are we are we are we are image bearers we are image bearers of god and that's who we were meant to be in the beginning so god is just undoing the curse of sin in your life your first fruits of what he's going to do to the whole world. You're there first. You're at the front of the pack. You're leading the way. Be an example. Look at the stamp on you and say, praise God, how did I even get here? Not by my own strength, rather than wrestling with some alternate personality. I want to be this. I want to be that. I want to have this. I want to have that, right? God, God says, let me stamp you. Be what I want you to be. I bought you, and, and if had he not bought us, we wouldn't be anything. We couldn't even achieve those minor things that we want. We would hit the wall of devastation far before we ever even got near those things because the devil won't give you anything. He won't give you anything, but Jesus gave you everything. With the stamp, he gave you everything. We have a clean palate to just rise take up your bed and walk and we're doing it in, in his strength in his words he said come and we're just coming we're just like those sunflowers that see the sun and just bend themselves towards the, the light we are not the light whatever secular humanism has told the church we are not the light we're stars we don't have intrinsic light we reflect the light of the sun just like the moon. You see it at night. It's all lit up. It's, it's controlling the tides of the world. It's, it's letting people see. It's providing light. But it's not the light. It's, it's, it's reflecting the light of the sun. And that's what we ought to be as image bearers of God. Uh, every time you go to the cross. Every time you read Ephesians. Every time you go to Romans. Every time you spend time with God. You may not know it. But he's stamping his image on you. He's pouring his light in you. So when you go out into a dark world, you, you're going to illuminate that. But it's not intrinsic light. It's, 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 it's his light. But that, what, a, what, a, what a privilege that men could see Christ in us. That all he wants from us is to 
just reflect my light. Be an image bearer of, of, of me. Let's go back to what it should have been in the garden before the enemy destroyed our freedom and talk about tyrants, tyrants in the garden. Tyrants have been here from the beginning, but they're not fighting against Adam. They're fighting against God. And God overthrew the tyrants in the garden. He overthrew them at the cross. He overthrew them time after time and time again. So if you think the tyrants are going to win this time, just go back and read the Bible from cover to cover like we did last year, and you'll see that the tyrants can't win because it's God's government. And he's, he's, he's going to overthrow the tyrants that are controlling his children. So we have the stamp of God on our lives. He goes on to say, what shall we say then to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Verse 31. But he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for all of us. How shall he not with these things freely give us all things? All things. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Is it God that justifies? Who can condemn? It is Christ that died, rather, it, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness, or pearl, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors in him that loved us. God's got you, for I am persuaded neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things come nor wicked governors, nor heights, I just added that, nor depth, nor other creatures shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Why did Paul say all this stuff to the Romans? Read this chapter. It's like, look at all he said to them. He told them they were saved. He told them they're struggling. God knows they're struggling. Walk by the Spirit anyway. Continue doing the works of God. You've been predestined from the foundation of the earth and nothing can separate you from the love of God. No demon in hell, no tyrant, no governor, nothing. When you are in Christ, because he has purchased you, you belong to him. It's a, it's an angry and strong husband who will come to your defense and he will rescue the church. All we have to do is cry out to him. We can't believe we can battle this demon, these tyrants in our own strength. We got to call out to the one who, whose ring we wear. We have to call out to the one who stamped his image on us, the strong God. And that's what Paul was saying here. God has got you. It may not seem like it, but God has got you. He bought you at the cross and he continues to carry you every day. Go to him. Don't bear the image of the world. Shake it off and bear the image of God. Come to Christ. Let him stamp that image fresh in your life. That's my reason to fight this week. That's my reason to struggle. Because the struggles get hard and you lose sometimes. Quite often. We don't, we're all different. But like I said, we're not keeping score and God's not keeping score. The question is, will you go back to the cross? Will you come to the cross initially to get God to be in, be in that covenant? And will you come back to the cross when you fall? Will this country come back to the cross? Will conservative Christians recognize how far we've been alienated from God by our sins? And that's what I said to Carolyn. I said, you know, God's doing something bigger than us just having to fight the governors and, and these corporations. God wants us to humble ourselves and, and, uh, again and come down and go back to the cross and recognize his purchase, his ring on our finger. The enemy can't take you away from God is what Paul said, but he can sure call you 
away. He can sure try to pry you away. He can sure entice you away. But when he does, just look at your finger and say, Jesus, look, how could he love someone like me? How could he just come in and save us the way he did out of nowhere? All of our stories are different. He came in and bought you and put a ring on your finger and said, you're mine. And for 40 years, I've tried to get away from him, you know, at times. And then you go, I'm here. look what he did for me. Look at Christ. He redeemed me. And all he wants to do is redeem me. And, and when, when I die, I, you know, I, I want to have the stamp of Christ on me. I want pe- I want it to be deep Amen. because when it's deep, you don't rub away something that's, that's deep. If you emboss something deeply, you're not just going to world isn't just going to rub it away. If it's rubbed away, it wasn't deep. If it's rubbed away, it might not have been the stamp of God. If it can come and go at trials, the stamp of God goes all the way to the heart. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all blessings in heavenly places in Christ. It's got a couple more scriptures here about being sealed. Second Timothy 2.19. But God's firm foundation stands. Bearing this seal, the Lord knows those that are his. And let everyone who names. Sorry, I'm not taking that call. Candace. But God's firm foundation stands bearing this seal. The Lord knows those that are his. Let everyone who names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Everyone who's stamped and sealed, the mandate is depart. Depart from those things. They're not lovely. They're not beneficial. Don't wear the devil's wedding ring. and Don't sit at his table. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure. Having this seal, the Lord knows those that are his. And then um, in him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, which is a guarantee of our inheritance. God stamped you, you're mine. It's a guarantee of his inheritance. You can take it to the bank. We don't have the full inheritance yet. We haven't come into glory. We haven't lost this body. We haven't received the new body. But God has stamped us. You're mine. We have it. It's ours by faith. We walk in it. And, and through this world, we walk in it more and more and more because we are his property. You were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. So Jesus saved us on the cross. We were saved. We were justified. We were washed clean. That was the beginning of our redemption. But this sanctification piece, this trying of your will, this this wrestling, 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 it's not a fun message and the church doesn't want to do it. But if you don't do it, you will you will keep the stamp of this world on you. And 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 and, and you don't put a new stamp over an old stamp. The old has to be cleaned and erased. You don't just keep stamping clean over dirt. You have to, there has to be a, there has to be a, it's all in the will. You determine, I'm going to be with Christ. I'm going to be with my husband. I'm going to keep getting up, keep going back to the cross. I belong to him. Put your will in it and keep your will in it. And when your will falls as it will, but your behavior will fall more. But your will is the thing. Keep your will in it. That's what Paul was saying in Romans. My my will is in it, he said. But my flesh still has these things in them. And and I have to wrestle. Paul said, I pummel my body and subdue it. After I preach to others, I myself could be disqualified. Moses was a bit disqualified. He didn't get to go to to, to Canaan, you know. There's consequences. There's things that I wish I never did as a Christian. 
but I can't take them back. But what I can do is go to Christ today and say, please wash me and put a fresh stamp of Christ on me. Just keep getting stamped. You know, if something goes wrong this week, man, I, I can't even preach. I better call Steve, you know. Then you come back to God. You get back up and you say, I'm taking the position. God has given you a position at the table. And whether you live worthy of that position, that's your seat, man. John, you have a seat at the table of Christ because he planned it before the foundation of the world. So when we get ourselves all yucky and messed up, you don't stay away from the table. You wash, you clean, you repent, and you go back to that seat. That's where you belong. That's the stamp of God. And as believers, you have that. And if there's anyone who doesn't believe today, that's what Christ wants to do to us. He's reversing the curse of sin in, in, in the world. In the end, he'll eradicate it all. But he started with his church. He started with you and I to make a people from, all, from the north to south to bring us all together and have an identity in Christ. It's a high and holy thing. It's what keeps me up. It's what got me in this altar today. I'm not just giving you philosophical things. That threw me in the altar today. That put me under this canopy to say, of course, I'm not worthy. Of course, my behavior is not acceptable. But I stand here in the righteousness of Jesus Christ and the stamp of God because he chose to do it. It's not my work. I would have been doing something else. That's how I stand today. And what a wonderful thing that is to, to be able to look people in the eye and say, I stand here because of Christ. And that's what my will is saying. Something happens when someone keeps loving you like that. It's the story of Hosea, right? Go marry this woman. Christ married that woman. And he is reforming us and, and beautifying us and bringing us to the table. Yeah. But, but Irish Catholic guys like me, it takes a long time, you know. He says, come on in. Come on in. To the, you, you're invited. Sit at the table. Next thing you know, he turns his back and we're shoving silverware down in our jeans. Like, this is a good deal. And Christ says, you don't have to do that anymore. It all belongs to you. So it's the criminal in us that has to change. But it already belongs to us. Because he's covered you. He's covered you like he's covered the good Samaritan said, whatever they need, pour oil on them, pour, pour, give, give them what they need. It's all on me. That's your relationship with Christ when you're saved. You don't have to steal the china. You don't have to look around and think, oh, what time's this place closed? <laughs> Unless you're Irish Catholic. And God has taken a long time to get that stuff out of the Irish. Sorry, I'm speaking about myself. It's not just, and the Portuguese, and the, the Puerto Rican Americans, and whatever you are, praise God. It's the stamp. I don't want that stamp on me anymore. And in the end, that's my will that's going to say, I don't want to bear the stamp of this world anymore. I don't want to smell like the world. Things that you thought were beautiful 10 years ago, you look at and go, ah, that's not beautiful. And when they said Jesus had no beauty, that people would look at him it meant that the world there was no worldly attraction he didn't have visaligners you know the world would look at him and go eh you know well what's with his hair that's the way the world judges beauty but this generation has more beauty they'll have the whitest teeth in hell this generation this generation is is got everything except for character they that's oh character what's that what's that but but they sure look pretty won't help them in the end they won't jesus will not buy it on the judgment day when you flick your hair out of them and try to give them the old wink you know whatever your charm was that worked down here it won't work there he'll see us for what we are and when you bear the image of christ he'll see christ god will say john i there's the stamp there's the stamp there's the stamp it's already on you i if i can see it come on god can see it it's on you live accordingly let that be your motivation when you have trouble remembering who you belong to. Amen. Would you close us in prayer? Would you close us in prayer?
Father God, thank you so much for this precious word that you've given, Ryan. God, it does hit home for each and every one of us. And God, um, it really brings us to a place of humility, Lord. And um, just to ponder that we're new and renewed in Christ's image because of you. God, I think it's just a beautiful uh, uh, picture that um, that we know we don't need to look back on our past, and that's who we are. We're we who we are in Christ, and created into a new image. And God, we're so thankful, so thankful, so thankful, Lord. And Lord, we're just grateful, Lord, for uh, this message. I know I am, Lord, and. And uh, I know everyone here is, Lord, and, and God, just, um, just how you laid it upon Ryan, Lord, to convey it to us, Lord, was from the Holy Spirit, Lord. And God, we just give glory to the Holy Spirit, thankfulness to the Holy Spirit, Lord. We're just grateful, Lord, that you are with us here underneath this canopy, Lord. Lord, I just thank you so much, Lord. And I pray, Lord, that, it, that you would allow us, Lord, to ponder this precious uh, message, Lord, as we leave, as we're sitting here right now, Lord, but as we leave, Lord, just to ponder it, don't let us, don't let it escape us, Lord. Please, God, do not allow this message to escape us. Lord, we pray and ask, Lord, that you would allow us to ponder and, and meditate upon Romans 8, Lord. Help us, Lord, to ponder the scriptures that, uh, that you took Ryan to, Lord. Help us, Lord, to really recognize and believe help us lord to believe your word what it's what is saying what it is saying it overrides our flesh it, it overrides our thoughts god because our thoughts our hearts will deceive us lord but god your word is what sustains us so god we just thank you so much lord thank you so much lord god he, we stand we sit here we stand here lord with the desire to know you even more and God, that's what our prayer has always been, to see you as you are and not as we perceive you to be. And Father, I think that's how you want us to see ourselves as an image, as, as uh, we are uh, to be the image of Christ. We have been stamped by Christ Jesus. Uh, Lord, we have been stamped. We should just rejoice. We should, we should be in humility. We should be humbled. We should go to our knees. We should, uh, when we are alone, and just cry out and say, Lord, thank you. Lord, deliver me from all those things that I've been struggling with. I have nothing. I shouldn't be struggling with these things because I have, I need to look at myself as you see me. Lord, when we repent, it's all done. It's finished. It's done. And Lord, that's, that's as simple as it is. And then the will is just as Ryan was saying, Lord, is just the change of the will. And then everything else happens after that. Everything else happens. That's where the fruit is exposed. And it's just something that we, that you give us something that's tangible to believe in and to see within ourselves. It's not of ourselves that we're changing. It's what you're doing on the inside. And God, it's not a work of ourselves. It's not something that it's a heavy burden for us. It's just a desire. We draw close to you because you say in your word, in, in, a, in, a, in just perfection, then I'll draw close to you. So God, thank you so much. The work is done. The work is finished through Christ Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord, um, for the confidence that Ryan can stand here in liberty, in true liberty, and just convey his heart and how it's impacted his life and how I think all of us can, re uh, to really, we can really identify. I know, I know I can. I know everyone here can, can identify. And that's where the change happens. We're at different places, but God, Lord, you will take us to the same place where we'll be in close, close proximity and closeness in our walk with Christ Jesus. So, Lord, we thank you so much, Lord. Lord, we pray your protection be upon all of us, Lord, everyone who's heard this message, Lord, and everyone who will, Lord. And um, I pray, Lord, that you protect Ryan as um, uh, with this message and, uh, and how he conveyed it, Lord. And and that he will not doubt it. Of course, Lord, I pray that he doesn't, that he should have added something or taken away something. His humor is good. 
with the big G. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's good. His his humor is really good, Lord, and just how he uh, how he just conveys um, his heart, and that's who he is. So, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for him. We thank you, Lord, for you. We praise you, Lord, because you are to be praised above all. And uh, Lord, we just pray and ask, Lord, that as we go into a time of prayer, God, lead us as we go into a time of prayer, because this is what you've called us to do as a church. We do it in um, because you've laid this upon our heart. It's not of ourselves. It's because of you and what you've called us to do as a church. And the responsibility is to intercede, uh, to to um, do those things that, that you called um, the times of old, where you look for people to cry out to you uh, to deliver not only ourselves, Lord, but your people and also a nation. So, God, we just come before you, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, to intercede for our nation and all those things that you've uh, laid upon our hearts in this time of prayer. God, we don't want to be orchestrating anything. We don't want to get in the way of the thing.